Persona 5's Goro Kechi game, Persona 3 Remake, and Persona 5 Arena. The rumor mill is constantly abuzz with various projects and it's a sticky situation because frankly, you can guess projects all the time and seldom be right. A broken clock is right twice a day after all. I think the idea of leaks is intrinsically tied to Christmas. Let me explain it a bit. One of the most anticipated Western traditions is Christmas. The act of receiving gifts and giving gifts on the designated giving day. We are drip fed the encouragement for commerce throughout the year, but it intensifies around October and builds to a crescendo in early December. Until finally, we open the gifts. As an adult, Christmas is more a logistics game, at least for me, because I'm constantly thinking of what to get my friends and family year round. As adults, you just grab what you think the other person wants and generally either they directly tell you what they want or you have that one annoying person who just says, oh, I don't want gifts this year, but you know, you know, you have to get them something. For kids, it's very different. A child's Christmas is where you probably made something in class to give to your parents. I don't know if you guys ever made those like stockings made out of paper. You just passively wait around and watch a pile of boxes, presumably, with your name on it, grow larger, and you'll wonder, what's inside? Many shows or movies display the kids wondering, what are these gifts? And even more salaciously, sometimes they open their gifts early. Leaking is a lot like that. We are constantly aware that, as an active game developer, they, in this instance, Atlas, but you can apply this to anyone really, are hard at work on one or more projects. If you're a super fan, you might know the different teams and if you're a mega tennist, you know a general idea of how many projects are being worked on. Then, with these boxes in front of you, well, you just gotta know what's inside. But guess what? Someone is claiming to know what your gifts are and they vaguely know what you want. So they tell you what you wanna hear and they're trustworthy because maybe it's your older brother or your older sister. You know, they were always your parents' favorite after all. And yeah, that's basically what leaking is. Sometimes that older child is a prankster who just wants to mess with you or wants you to give them attention. The prestige of knowing something and being able to share it. And sometimes they might actually have an insight because maybe they are your parents' favorite and maybe your parents did tell them what you got. Now, why does all this matter? Well, the Persona leaks are made by people who have street cred, but why? Well, I think the main reason people value leakers is because of a presumed authority. Maybe they have their own blog or maybe they post on a gamer forum with some renown. They'll often write very matter of fact because that brings believability to the table. And new sites also just happen to love leakers. It gives them something to post about and oftentimes these news sites are really the proponents of the leak and give it credibility by proxy. By Kotaku or whatever, Game Informer, I actually don't know what people watch or listen to. <laughs> but anyway, by them publishing articles, it legitimizes the leak. And now, well, not only did your older sibling tell you what you're getting for Christmas, but maybe your aunt and uncle said it's true. And the credibility of the leakers is always funny. I know some people who do or used to get insider info I mean, I've gotten some myself, so I know there's loose lips in game development. But at the same time, the people divulging information are usually getting it from a secondary source. To go back to reality, Atlas is a Japanese game developer. Let's think about this. You're telling me some random on Reset Era is in talks with Atlas Japan? No, Loru, you're wrong. They are in talks with Atlas West. Well, now you've just gone from talking directly to people to being involved with the localization branch, and that's just a layer removed. I decided to dig into this a little bit, just for the sake of argument. The leaker for Persona 3 Remake is a guy named Lo Li Lo La Il Lo. I don't know. <laughs> and his proven track record, according to this article, is that he mentioned the P3P port, and he did that September 13th. In a thread about Xbox, they are discussing Atlas starting to release multiplayer. And Lowe teases that 
Atlas is finally listening to the top requests made by fans, goes on to reply to one of these guesses as to his quirky tease, and it's the one about the Persona 3 remake. As for if the Persona 3 remake is actually the top request, I wasn't sure, so I had to actually look it up. And lo and behold, in May of 2022, they released the data of the polls that were taken, and question 48 of the poll asked about what remake you wanted the most. The top results are as following. Persona 3, P3, Fast, and P, 78%. Persona 2, Innocent Sin and Eternal Punishment, 78%. Revelations Persona, 76%. Persona 4, 74%, the Rido series, 72%, Soul Hackers, 69%, SMT4, Apocalypse, 66%, SMT4, 65%, Digital Devil Saga, 62%, and the Etrian series at 58%. So just a sidebar, what makes this so stupid to me is the assertion that Atlas is finally listening to fans. Anyone who reads Atlas interviews, especially after the release of Strange Journey Redux in 2017, would know that Atlas feverishly reads comments, reviews, and forum posts from fans. Part of why they do this annual poll is because of their crazy, intense fixation on fan feelings. The results of this is pretty obvious. Nocturne HD, So Hackers 2, the Persona ports as well are all things resulting directly from fan feedback. Now, to be fair, they should be just listening to my opinion, not all the internet. Here's a rendering of what the Megaton fandom would look like if Atlas acted on my opinions alone. Jokes aside, if anything, the listening to fans approach seems more detrimental because every one of the mentioned releases open to some controversy more or less, whether it be removing Rido from regional releases or using AI to upscale assets to varying degrees of success. Going back to the topic of Lowe's validity, I decided to look at their post history. He's got over 700 posts and they seem to have started back in mid-2021. His third ever reply was a Persona one, and he must not have had the clout yet because the replies he made that bring up Persona are basically ignored. But he teases that we should be excited for the Persona event, which, I mean, he's talking about the 25th anniversary event, which according to some messages at the tail end of 2022, didn't go according to plan. But, but we did end up getting Persona 4 Arena Ultimax ported, Persona 5 ported, P3P and P4 ported, but like, I think that his commentary on the subject isn't worth scrutinizing with the benefit of hindsight because last time they announced an anniversary celebration, we got Persona 5. And for Shimigami Tensei, we got SMT5 and Strange Journey being castrated and re-released to celebrate the anniversary. So the precedent is there that we get some games in some form or another. And his language is so vague that he would be right as long as something good happened on the anniversary. Which is like saying, you're probably gonna get Christmas gifts. Kind of just works unless something catastrophic happens or you don't celebrate Christmas. Then later, the same year, he says this. Someone says, for some reason, I still think it's coming. TGS is as good a time as any to reveal that. Lo. The ports are coming. The thing is, Atlas probably wants to unveil them themselves because they're not only Xbox ports. The games are multi-platform, obviously. I don't think the Persona games are going to be announced in the Xbox show, but there's plenty of publishers in Japan, and of course there's Namco Bandai. Again, he talks vaguely, with an air of authority, and again, he doesn't get any response, so... <laughs> because even though he's been teasing for a few months, he still has no clout. Then, just days later, that brings us to when he gets way more specific. LBB Baker. So... What are the chances of Persona 5 Royal on Xbox? Low. Hi. Also P3P and P4G. Switch and PC as well. What makes this interesting is he actually finally gets someone to take his bait and engage with him. The reply asks, mm, Are you an insider or a leaker? You've been extremely confident about an Xbox port. Low. I've talked things with certain people who knows about some unannounced games coming. Same for the other game I talked about coming to Xbox. So what this does make me think is that he's not talking with Atlas Japan. He's probably not even talking to Atlas West. He might have sources in the Xbox slash 
Microsoft communities, if at all. This guy then goes on to predict that Arena announcement by mentioning it would happen in September of 2021. And he was right. Uh, the announcement did happen December of 2021. So clearly, like I said, he's got some insider info probably, or he just guessed right. Going back to the P3 remake, he calls it P3R and says it stands for something else in the vein of Persona 5 Royal or Persona 4 Golden, rather than being Persona 3 Remake. This spawned a new thread called, and I quote, My Nintendo News. Rumor, Persona 3 Remake is apparently in development by Atlas, vetted by a Reset Era mod, but he doesn't join that. His predictions for P3R do include the info that it's a fusion of P3FES and P3P, and somehow doesn't include the FEMC. Now he's got clout, so when he posts, people actually respond. And funny enough, when I was looking at his post history, he denounces leakers who just regurgitate popular information or guesses, and for people who don't have enough of a following for their opinions to be valid. All that being said, yes, leakers told me this exact thing might happen, that there was gonna be a Persona 3 remake, but I really just think about my ideal Christmas. And personally, I'd rather be surprised by what we get then have my older brother spoil my Christmas gift. Going to the Akechi leak, we have one guy to thank for that. His name is Zippo. Curiously, Zippo also leaked the arena announcement in the same general time that Lo did. Anyway, the Akechi reveal is scant. And here's all there is. Welcome back! I got some articles ready to drop, but not much is going on right now. Time to drop another bomb. We have many more Persona announcements coming, including a surprise eighth announcement. Here's number four. It'll be starring an unexpected character. That's right. Akechi is going to be starring in his own game. You're going no effing way. He's kidding, right? I'm not. Tons of details are scarce at the moment, but I've been told not to expect an RPG. It'll focus on his adventures and skills as a star detective. I'll update this article when I have more to share. This was followed by no news updates. I perused his blog, and he's more like a shotgun than the previous leaker. He seems to have insider info for Nintendo at large because he also predicted a new Mario 2D game that won't have new super in the name and its art style will be surprising to people, and it will have multiplayer, and it will have the Foreman Spike. He said it's also very far along in development. I genuinely don't know what to say about this because, because Zippo will mostly post his reaction content on his blog, but sometimes he posts predictions, and then, you know, he posts his scoops, and they're not really separated into an easy to digest form. So what do I think about all this stuff? Well, <laughs> if either of these people are right, my, 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 this comment section is gonna be Making fun of me. <laughs> I personally don't feel like it matters. I personally do not feel it makes much business sense for Persona to have a P3 remake if it excludes FEMC and somehow hybridizes the P3P stuff, which, what is that, the Margaret battle? And I don't really think people would want that. It would truly be a monkey's paw situation. To add to that, I hate remakes and I only really care for ports, not HD ports, just give it to me as it was. If I had to guess, the P3 remake isn't happening and I genuinely hate to be wrong, especially if it was made internally because that would mean taking away assets and stuff that could have been put towards an entirely new game. In regards to the Akechi game, I believe P5 is entering its fatigue stage, interest is waning a bit and they really missed the opportunity to capitalize on it further, in my opinion. I don't want this, but I'd prefer that over a remake or remaster, if anything. Lastly, when it comes to leaking, I think none of this should really be taken seriously. It's just a bland way of building hype. I think we should always remember that just because a news outlet or several news outlets are publishing something, doesn't mean it's credible or even interesting. Don't be a ravenous consumer of rumors. I thought Persona had already taught us that rumors were bad. And that's it. I'd like to thank my channel members T, Carmagito, A Liar Remains A Lie, and FF12Kid. Buy my merch, and goodbye, fellow Megatennists.